SV Bonnie sent this for review and that was a couple of months ago, which means I've had two and a half clear nights to try it out. It's 80 millimeter, so naturally you'll want to compare it to the 503. The 550 is a little different. The rotator is gone. What was gold is now red and it's a little bit shorter because the focal length changed from 560 to 480. It, it's also a triplet apo. Having perfect color correction is always the end goal, but it usually requires a lot of money to get there. Let's get this out of the way. The 550 is 900 US dollars, and that's just for the tube. The field flattener and rotator are separate for 200 for the pair. I get it, we're all spoiled from the 503, but that was a doublet. This is a triplet. Adding that third element really is that difficult. The best analogy is like going from tossing two things and now you have three. To get there it requires a lot of failure, reset, and repeat until it works. And this is a smallish brand and an already niche hobby. They don't have economy of scale on their side like Nikon or Canon who can make a 10 element kit lens for $200. When I first saw it use as FPL 51, I was extremely hesitant. Browse APOs long enough and you'll see the trend. They all use 53. That's your starter pack. But then I remembered how well the 503 does, so maybe adding that third element is the secret sauce that will reel in the blues. There was only one thing for it, and that was to pit it up against the 503. I chose to image Vega because it's bright and obnoxious, and there's also a bunch of magnitude 4s around it that I know will have blue halos when I use the 503. And that's even when I use my monochrome ASI 1600. When I recombined to make it RGB, I was floored. The halos from the 503 are completely gone. Ignore Vega, this giant halo is from my cheap ass not so anti-reflection filters. This is not from the telescope. While we're here, I don't see any spherical aberration. I see sharp, true color stars, and that's all. From what I can tell, despite so many having a fit about it using 51 glass, this is a true APO. Like I said earlier, there are a couple extras you can get with this, starting with the field corrector. It's freaking huge, but there's a very good reason for that. The system is designed to work with full frame cameras, so you need that extra large aperture to avoid vignetting. A very important note here, this attaches with threads, and the super convenient field rotator we have on the 503, again, is not on the 550. It's not game over, that's what this is for. A little annoying to have to pay extra just so you can adjust your framing, but they did not skimp on the quality of this thing. Seriously, they did not mess around because even though this thing appears very small and delicate, it's incredibly smooth and sturdy as hell. Even with the thumb screw all the way out, there's a pleasant amount of friction in here. It's not like it's sticky or twitchy like there's sand in it. There is some good news if you want to skip all of that. If you already have the corrector from your 503 ADED, you can use that with the 550. Its back focus does need a little adjustment because you're going from 560 to 480, but it flattens the field and reduces, changing this from f6 to 4.8, making it that much faster and easier to capture faint nebula. All that said, I want to appreciate the looks of this. I know I bashed the 503 for being another plain white tube. This one isn't much different, but because they swapped the red and gold, it now matches everything I have from ZWO. If they went all out and used carbon fiber, game over, you're now in the big leagues. To sum it up, it uses FPL 51, but it's a true APO. The red is amazing, focuser, dew shield, tube rings, the quality is just as good if not a little bit better than the 503. A field flattener is required, but you can get away with what you already have. And this is my choice, but I prefer the corrector from the 503 to get that wider view, at the same time making this scope just a little bit faster. I image primarily narrowband, so faster is better for me anyway. It'd be weird if I did a review for a telescope this important and did not have a picture to show what it's really capable of. A couple weeks ago, I drove a few hours east to meet up with some folks under Bortle 2 skies and really let this thing just have at it. 